we've mentioned a lot of books throughout this conversation. Mm -hmm. I wonder, and this makes me really curious to explore in a lot of depth, the kind of books that you're interested in. I think you mentioned in your show mm -hmm. that you uh, you provide recommendations. Yes, I do. In the form of spoken word, mm -hmm. can you be on what we've already recommended, mention books, whether it is historical, uh, nonfiction, or whether it's more like philosophical or even fiction that had a big impact on your life. Is there, is there a few that you can mention? Sure. I already talked about the Johnson book, so I'll leave that alone. Robert A. Caro, he's still alive, thank God. He's finishing the last book. Uh, I hope he makes it. So that those Johnson books. Second- but Can I ask you a yeah. question about those books? Yes. What the hell do you fit into so many pages? Everything, man. <laughs> Let me tell you this. So I'll just give you an anecdote. This is why I love these books. The beginning, the first book yeah. is about Lyndon Johnson. Yes. His life to when he gets elected to Congress. The book begins with a history of Texas and its weather patterns and then of his great, great grandfather moving to Texas. Yes. Then the story of that. About a hundred or so pages in, you get to Lyndon Johnson. Yes. <laughs> that's how that's how you do it. Okay. Which is so you it's get like a Tolstoy style uh, it's, retelling. This is the thing. It's not a biography. It's a story of the times. That's what great well, biography. So another one. This isn't part of my list. So don't okay. do it. Uh, uh, is right. Grant. Off the record. Ron Chernow. Ron Chernow's Grant. It's a thousand pages. And the reason I tell everybody to read it is it's not just the story of Grant. It is the story of pre-Civil War America, the Mexican-American War, the Civil War, and Reconstruction all told in the life of one person who was involved in all three. Mm. Most people don't know anything about the Mexican-American War. It's fascinating. Most people don't know anything about Reconstruction. Now, more so because people are talking, it's a hot topic now. I've been reading about it for years. That is another thing people need to learn a lot more about. In terms of non-history books, the book that probably had the most impact on me, which is also a, it's a historical nonfiction, is I am obsessed with Antarctic exploration. <laughs> and it all began with a book called Shackleton's Incredible Journey, which is the collection of diaries of everybody who was on Shackleton's journey. For those who don't know, um, Shackleton was the last explorer of the heroic age of Antarctic exploration. He led a ship called the Endurance, which froze in the ice um, off the coast of Antarctica in 1914 and they didn't have radios or the last exploration a last one without the age of radio and he happens to freeze in the ice and then the ship collapses after a year frozen in the ice and this man leads his entire crew from that ship onto the ice with a team of dogs survives out on the ice for another year with three little lifeboats and is able to get all of his men, every single one of them alive to an island hundreds of miles away called Elephant Island. And when they got there, he had to leave everybody behind except for six people. And him and two other guys, I'm forgetting their names, navigated by the stars 800 miles through the Drake Passage with seas of hundreds of feet to Prince, I think it's called Prince George's Island. Mm -hmm. And then when they got to Prince George's Island, they landed on the wrong side and they had to hike from one side to the other to go and meet the whalers. And every single one of those things was supposed to be impossible. Nobody was ever, nobody was ever supposed to hike that island. It wasn't done again until like the 1980s with professional equipment. Mm -hmm. he, he did it after two years of starvation. Nobody was ever supposed to make it from Elephant Island to Prince George. The guy, they had to hold him steady, his legs, so that he could chart the stars. And if they miss this island, they're into open sea. They're dead. And then before that, how do you survive for a year on the ice? Yeah. On seals. And before that, he kept his crew from depression, frozen one year in the ice. It's inc just an amazing story. And it, it made me obsessed with Antarctic exploration, so I've read like 15 books on. What the hell is it about the human spirit? That it's amazing, that's, that. that's the thing about Antarctica is it brings it out of you. You, so for example, I read another one recently called Mawson's Will, Douglas Mawson, he was an Australian. He was on the one of the first Shackleton, uh, Frost, Robert Frost expeditions. He leads 
an expedition down to the south. Him and uh, a partner, they're leading uh, exploration, it's 1908, something like that. Yes. They're going around Antarctica um, with dog teams. And one of the, what happens is they keep going over these snow bridges where there's a crevice, but it's covered in snow. Mm -hmm. And so the one of the, the lead driver, the dogs go over and they plummet. And that sled takes with it. So the guy survives, but that sled takes all their food, half the dogs, their stove, the the camping tent, the tent specifically designed for the snow, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And they're hundreds of miles away from base camp. He and this guy have to make it back there in time before the ship comes to come get them on an agreed upon date. And he makes it. But the guy he was with he dies, and it's a crazy story. They they have first of all they have to eat the dogs. The, a really creepy part of Antarctic exploration is everyone ends up eating dogs at different points. Yeah. Um, and part of the theory, which is so crazy, is that the guy he was with was dying because they were eating dog liver, and dog liver has a lot of vitamin E, which if you eat too much of it can give you like a poisoning, and so. Uh, Mawson, by trying to help his friend, was giving him more of liver. Of all the things yes, that kills you. I know, his dog liver. Uh. And so his friend ends up dying, have a horrific heart attack. All of that, Mawson crawls back hundreds of miles away, makes it back to base camp hours after the ship leaves. And two guys, or a couple of guys stayed behind for him. And he basically has to recuperate for like six months before he can even walk again. But it's like you were saying about the human spirit. It's like, Antarctica brings that out of people. Or Amundsen, the guy who made it to the South Pole, Robert Amundsen, oh my God. Like this guy trained his whole life in the ice from Norway to make it to the South Pole. And he beat Robert Frost, the, the British guy with all this money and all these. I, I could go on this forever. I'm, I'm obsessed with Antarctica. Uh, well, stories. first of all, I'm yeah. going to, you know, yeah. I'm going to take this part of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to set it to music. Yeah. I'm going to listen to it because I've been whining and bitching about uh, running 48 miles with Goggins this <laughs> next weekend. And this is, this yeah. is going to be so easy. I'm just going to listen to this over and over in my head. You're you know, going to be- Elon.